I want to talk about the Spirit of God today, how precious it is. And being led by the Spirit of God, and in Romans it says, for many of that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. God really wants us to be led. You know how hard that is sometimes? Anybody thought they were being led and they weren't being led at all? They were being led down a dark little trail. Sometimes we, we do our best to seek the Lord or be led of Him. And although it seems to start out good, it ends up bad. And then we f find out that wasn't even a God thing at all. God, how did I miss you? Anybody ever feel that? Like distraught? Like where are we at in all this? But God says in Ephesians 5.17, Be not wise. Be not unwise, I mean. Be not unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Don't be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Now remember the first time that we start getting around people that says, hey, God talked to me. And of course, all our friends were of the darkness and we were all excited about the Lord because we got born again. And the comment was made, God talked to me. And in their minds, God don't talk to anybody because God doesn't talk to them. But to us, the Lord was giving us impressions and giving us a little ups here and there. And we said, God is talking to us. God's saying things. And the reason was because we were following the Lord and we were the children of God and it says the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. But God says he doesn't want us to be unwise. We want to know what his will is. And so we just kind of grow up in uh, the, the philosophy of I'll just pray that the whole world be saved. And God says, that's not my will for you. I'll just pray that everybody in Egypt gets saved and I'll just go right through everybody in Africa and everybody here and there and go, or Egypt is Africa, but all those things. Everybody just gets saved and we just cover the whole thing in one prayer. Kind of like Luke used to do when he was a little boy, he prayed every night and he says, God, same thing I prayed last night, just consider it for tonight too. And then you go to bed. Was that the will of God? <laughs> that was the easy way out. <laughs> that was the easy way out. He didn't have to be led too much on that one. Just whatever I prayed last night. Just And you know what? You have to give him this. It was like, I'm going to say the same thing. But nevertheless, God wants us to be led on what to say, even for tomorrow. Um, and so I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you something here that God said to do. But it, the whole idea is being led of the Lord, being led of the Lord. And the fine gift that you have, the Spirit of God, don't treat it so recklessly. Is that a possibility? He says here, it's, he, as you go preaching, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, heal the sick. Do you heal the world? You heal who God wants you to heal. Amen? Amen? Jesus didn't raise every person that was dying in his day. He didn't raise them all up from the dead, but there were certain ones he raised from the dead. The woman that had a young, uh, a young child, sounds, sounds like he was maybe uh, 20 years old, something like that, and she was following behind the procession crying, and Jesus had compassion on her. He wasn't into raising everybody, but he walked up to the briar and touched it. And life came immediately into that man. There was joy that day. We were going to the graveyard, but not now. Not now. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. And of course, we don't charge for this, amen? We don't have holy hankies that we send out for 25 bucks. We don't have holy water that we send out and we do this. There is so much crud in our churches today. Amen? We don't light candles in front and charge you for it. Five bucks will get you prayers continuously. We don't do that. Provide neither gold nor, or silver 
nor brass in your purses. He says, don't worry about what you have, just go. Just go and do it. No script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes or yet stays. He says, don't worry about the, if you got everything. Because if you need a toothbrush, you'll find one along the way. But I would suggest try to take at least that. <laughs> the workman is worthy of his meat. And to whatever city or town you shall enter, here's where I want you to dial in. Inquire who is worthy. Inquire who's a Christian. Inquire who it is that really deserves a blessing. Who is it that really deserves a blessing? I'm going to tell you something. God does raise people up out of the gutters, and he does do this, and he does do that. And we've seen he's right there down in the gutters with them, and he raises them up. Amen? But what about the, what about the poor guy... What about the person that's been serving God for 20 years? And they've been just believing God for a blessing of the Lord like none before. How about the one that's been feeding the sick and singing and taking care of people? How about them? Amen? How about that they get rewarded a little bit? How about that the prophet come over to their place? How about the, the lady that been following Jesus and her son and they're getting ready to eat their last meal? We've talked about that. What about those people that have been faithful to God? Amen. What about them? Who is it that you should go to and spend a night with them and be a blessing to them? It is possible that Jesus is saying, go to the person that's been following me constantly and stay at their place because I got a big blessing for them. Just think about Cornelius. Love the Lord, gave alms, prayed all the time, was in his time of fasting, and an angel appears before him and says, go to this certain place. And he says, go get Peter. Go get him. Go get this man of God. You've been serving me for a long time. God wants to bless the socks off you right now. How many know that they weren't going to get blessed unless Peter came? The Spirit of God wasn't going to come on him unless Peter came. With the anointing that he had on him, and when he walked into that place, he started preaching, they all got filled with the Spirit of God in spoken tongues. When was the last time you saw that happening? Amen? Wouldn't you just, what, what if Peter came back today? What if Peter just come back and said, you know, it's not in the Scriptures, or it is, I'm one of the two witnesses. I'd like to stay at your house tonight. I thought you were supposed to be Moses and Elijah. What would you say? Come on over. <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say, come on over? And wouldn't it be cool if Peter says, the reason why I'm spending tonight with you, before they go to Jerusalem and die in the streets, the reason I'm spending tonight with you, because God says you've been faithful with the gifts that he has given you. And he wants to bless you tonight. I'm really the only one that can bless you like this because I'm the one that walks in this anointing. As I can shut off the water in the skies, as I can turn the sea into blood, I can change your life that was upside down, right side up. I have that anointing, and God says I'm sinning you. God is giving you anointing too. And he's saying, whatever city you go in, find out who is worthy. Inquire who is worthy and there abide, stay there until you leave town. And when you come into the house, salute it. Let your glory, let your peace come upon it. Let your blessing that you have come upon it. It's a spiritual blessing that turns everything that is not right, right. Why would you have to do it if the people were already righteous? Why would that man, why would Peter or Paul... Jesus, tell them that whatever town they go into, whatever house they go into, if those people are worthy, give them a blessing. Why would he do that if they have all the blessings they need? Because they don't have all the blessings they need. There's blessings yet to be had from the Lord. Now, you're the blesser in many cases. Also, people need to bless you back that have that certain anointing on them. But you're the blesser. That's how I want to want you to go with this thing today. You're the one going to the house. You salute it. You honor it. 
And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Know it in the spirit of God that this is what I should do. That this, this house is worthy of my blessing to change things around. Change the darkness into light. That this woman or this man's been sick for a long time. But now my job is to heal it. Let this house be healed. Whatever is wrong with this house, be healed. Let my peace come upon it. Maybe it's a house that don't have the peace that it deserves. Maybe that's what it was. If it's worthy, then it's worthy to have the peace. But the peace isn't there. He said, let your peace come upon it. I tell you, there's nothing like the peace of God. If you have the peace of the Lord, you can go through anything. But you have that peace taken from you. You can't go through anything. You can't go through anything. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if, the house, but if it be not worthy, let your re peace return unto you. Do not let that house have your blessing. Sometimes God's waiting for his people the arms, the legs, to come and make a difference. But sometimes when you get there and you find out they are not worthy, they are just flat not worthy, God says, don't you dare bless them. In fact, if you bless them, call the blessing back. Do you have the power to do that? Yes, you do. And what do we do so many times? We just bless this one. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See you later. God bless you. And you just turn around and you just almost want to cry and say, they don't follow the Lord. They just don't follow the Lord. And yet, what did I do? I says, God bless you. Let your peace, let the peace of God come upon you. That's a blessing of the Lord. And God says, they weren't worthy of it. They were not to have that. They were not to have that. For they reject me. And they reject my ways. Now I'm going to give you another scripture here. Sons of God are led by the spirit of God. Jesus was led up to go into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. What to be tempted? To show himself approved to God. Amen? He was. Sometimes when you go into a certain situation. And you get there and you go. Oh it's so dark. Doesn't mean God didn't lead you there. He did lead you there because you're able to handle it and make a difference. Or it's there to refine you. Amen. Sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. You see how important that is? See how important that is? See how important we need to pray? You say, I don't even know. What, we, what should we pray today? My golly, that should be when the hands go up, ten hands go up, that we be, we be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, I don't know, God. How many times here have we said, who, what do we need to pray for? And all the hands are down. I understand that. Sometimes you just can't think of anything. But how many times that, if it's just that thing, that we be led by the Spirit of God. I love that. We'll keep praying that. We be led by the Spirit of God. That I be led by the Spirit of God. I love you all, but I'm praying for me right now, and I want somebody to talk about me. Amen? I want that. I got to be led by the Spirit of God. Because how many times are we not led by the Spirit of God? How many times does the Spirit of God with that still small voice is telling us, and yet we don't do it. Yet we bypass it. We keep walking when I should have. And I knew it was the Lord, but yet I didn't do it. The Lord says, don't do that, don't do that. The Lord says, do that, do that. And yet we walk the other way. How about if we yield to that? God, let me be led by you. It isn't that my heart is wicked. It's just sometimes I just, it's like I don't even listen to him. The unction inside me. I want to be a Christian God because you said the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. I want to be a Christian. I don't want to hit it one time out of ten. How many of that's failing? When I was in school, I got a 10, that's 10%. Instead of 90%, 90 was a, a B plus or might even been a B minus. I'm not really sure. Didn't get many of them to really figure that out. I knew what an F was. <laughs> and an F minus is really bad. <laughs> I think that F would just be good enough. Let me, let, me, let me show you this, how important it is to be led by the Spirit of God and just don't go throwing your 
your anointing around. You know, well, whoever it lands on, it lands on. We're supposed to be better than that. We're supposed to be better than that. In uh, 2 John, verse 10, it says, If there comes any of you, and bring not this doctrine, if there comes any unto you, and they don't have the doctrine that you have. Now, how off is off, I don't know. I do know that when certain people come to your front door and they want to tell you that Satan was Jesus' brother and Jesus was Satan's brother and there was just a battle going on, Jesus decided to stay with God. There's just some things that you say no. And there's some that you should understand. What doctrine do they believe in? It is important that you understand that. Now we're talking about we're talking about Christians here. It's obvious he's talking about Christians. He's not talking about somebody that doesn't know Jesus, that's never been introduced to Jesus. No, this is somebody that's been introduced to Jesus and they're going the crooked way. Whatever crooked way that is. And they don't bring the doctrine that we gave you. We don't, they don't talk the same language, Christian language, that's in the Bible. This is a doctrine. This is what we call doctrine. What is written down, what is true. Amen? Receive him not into your house. Into your house. We don't let everybody stay at our house. Very few people stay at my house. I don't need the junk afterwards. Amen? It ain't happening. Let him not come to your house, neither bid him God's speed. God bless you. God bless you. I know that you believe in this weird doctrine and that weird doctrine. I know it's just that more, you know, it isn't only Jesus, it's Jesus and I know you believe that you don't have to walk with Jesus to get into heaven. Just confess him as Lord. I know that. Listen, that's a very dangerous doctrine. Very dangerous. But yet, how are we? We receive anybody that confesses Jesus as the Lord. Even if they're not their Lord. Paul says, if you, you bid them. John says, if you bid them, God's speed. God's blessing. God's blessing. God bless you. He says, For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his, of his evil deeds. Oh my golly. I want, you to, I want you to see that. You give a blessing out into the home of a person that's not worthy. God says, I don't want you doing that. He's not worthy of that blessing. Now when you cut somebody that you're going to maybe let come over, be in your house, and you go, and they leave, and you say, God's speed, God's blessing, God bless you, and you know that they're not right, and they know that they're not right, and yet you say, God bless you, God says you partake of their sin. What you're saying is you qualify to be a Christian, and may God's blessing on you. God's blessing isn't on people that don't follow him. Even though they know him. And God says I don't want you to be blessed in him. Think of all the Christians that are not being blessed. Think of all the Christians that are not being blessed. Why are they not being blessed? Now there is blessings in people's lives. Some Christians. It's like. If it could go wrong it does go wrong. And it just seems like there's no protection. Why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't there be? Why is there protection on other people's lives? They pray to God, this happens, that happens. They don't get everything they want. They don't even get everything maybe they, 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 they think they need, but they still get by. But then there's some people that, ah, what's going wrong? Tell you what, there's something wrong at the home. There's something wrong somewhere. God says, if you bid that person, God's speed. God's blessing. He says, you're partaking of that because you're okay in it. You're okay in it. 
God bless you. You know what you should say? Repent. What kind of goodbye is that? That's the only one you'll ever get out of my mouth. Repent. Repent. Oh, would you bless me? That's like Pharaoh going to Moses and saying, raise my child. Bless me. And he just turned around and walked away. Didn't say anything. Susanna, she, she, uh, she told me, she says, when there was a, a certain people that would come to their front door witnessing, and they were called some kind of witnesses. Anyway, her dad never said a goodbye to you. He didn't say anything. He did not let him in their house and say, well, I'll try to convince him. Hello? Or, yeah? <laughs> I guess that would be, that would be the, yeah? No. He took that very seriously. Well, maybe we'll get them saved. You know, I tried to get those people saved one time, brought them my home, showed them the scriptures, and they go, where'd you read that from? Come on, you're supposed to be teaching me, and yet I'm, I'm here teaching you. I was kind of ready for him anyway. I wanted to te test out my skills. <laughs> hey, there's so much of that. But I just want to see, how, I want you to see how important you are and how important it is for you to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, can this be a blanket statement in many cases? Well, it is to some degree, but then some, I knew a man that went in a tavern and he found his wife there. He sat down, ordered a Coke. She's there at the bar. And he started talking to her about Jesus. Totally blown out for the Lord. That's Now, let me say this. How about it? Us all to go down to the tavern. Maybe the Lord will bring a breath. No. <laughs> no. Being led of the Spirit of God. How important is it? It's everything. It's everything. How precious is that to you? It's so precious that you need to yield to it and seek it. Seek and you shall find. Why not the will of God? What, what, what it could be more and precious? Ask, seek, and knock for that I be led by the Spirit of God. If that was your prayer every night, wouldn't it be a good prayer? It just as good as let me have the love of Christ in my heart towards other people. That's a good one, isn't it? Would we, would we say that that'll never be answered? That'd be right, like top on the list. Those two things that I said, top on the list. That I would love like God and I'd be led by the Spirit of God. Jesus said this. He says, God is a spirit and they worship him, must worship him and in spirit and in truth. They must be in the spirit. The son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. Oh, should, we, should we be any less in Christ? Oh, nobody's going to be like Christ. Well, can you be a little bit like Christ? He says, I do nothing of myself, only what I see the Father do. So whatever he says he does, this is what the Son of Man does also. Likewise, in John 5.30, it says, I can of my, my own self do nothing. But as I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. We know that that's right. We seek not our own will, but what, what God's will is, but the will of the Father which has sent me. He says, how can you get God to love you? I want you to listen to this in John 9, 17, if I read it right. Therefore, doeth my Father love me. Why does he love him? He says, because I lay down my life. Why does the Father love me? Now everybody says, God loves you, God loves you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're not laying down your life, can God really love you like he wants to love you? Let's put it like that. He says, Jesus says, Therefore doeth my Father love me because I lay down my life. Because I lay down my life. And in that way, I'll be able to take it up again. If he didn't lay down his life, Jesus was not going to rise from the dead. He laid down his life for God. He says, but my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I'll give them eternal life. Following the voice of God. 
How important is it? You know, sometimes we, we do certain things. We go, it says be a blessing to people. But yet we're blessing people with money and different things like that. That it really wasn't led by the Spirit of God. How, not that you would lose your blessing maybe. God, God will turn around and bless you just because you're, you just didn't understand. But many times, many times God says, I didn't want you to do that. It's like the pastor that tells all the people to dig deep in their pockets until it hurts. Is that really God? Is that really God? If it don't hurt, it's not a sacrifice to God. So dig deep, dig deep, dig deep. And he gets a collection thing, clear full. Is that really God? Is it really God that you would write a check out and totally tap out your bank account that you can't pay your bills next week? Is that really God? One chance out of a million, or maybe 10 million, that'd be a God thing. God says, no, I want you to give it all. But usually it's not God. Amen? God wants everything done in order. Loving, loving your life is just not loving the Spirit of God. Loving your life, it, part of your life, is not. And that's what I put as a heading. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. In other words, you're not to love your life. Loving the Spirit of God is where you need to go, is what I want to say. You got to lose. You got to lose the love for your life. You got to lose your love. And if you don't love your, lo your life, you'll be able to do the will of God. Here's, here's a good one in John 12 42 nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on Jesus but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the way or out of the synagogue and this is what Jesus said for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God what I'm saying here is that there was people in Jesus' day, they believed in Jesus, but they did not stand up for Jesus and be a witness for him. They loved their life. They loved their life. They did not follow the Holy Spirit in it. They loved their life, and they kept quiet because they were afraid of what the Pharisees were going to say. And he says, they loved their life more than, they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. 